Okay, hello everybody. Uh, in today's class, uh, we will do few problems uh, related to the theory which we have learned so far in terms of uh, several steps of modeling. So, I start with the question which I had asked you last time. So, starting from a lossless pendulum for which the equations look like this, right, where theta was the angular displacement and theta double dot plus g over L sin theta was equal to 0. Okay. And this represented a simple harmonic motion. Is there an electrical analog of such a, you know, of such a behavior or such dynamics? Well, let us take this circuit with L and a C. Right? So, if I write down the voltage loss, I will have L di by dt plus 1 over C integral i dt is 0, right? Or if I write it in terms of the charge, I will have L d 2 q by d t square plus q over C is equal to 0, okay? So, this, the solution to this will be periodic, right? In, in the same way as it will be to uh, to these equations. Only different is difference here is that I am just using both of them are linear elements. So, here uh, the sinusoidal term comes because of the non-linearity of the element. Of course, we will discuss about the relation between this model and this model when we do linearization of non-linear systems, but solutions to both of them will just be periodic. right? And when we had the lossless or the pendulum with, uh, with some friction element, we had an additional term. So, my equations look like theta double dot plus g over L sin theta plus uh, b theta dot was equal to 0 and analogous here would just be an RLC circuit. So, I just add a resistance a R. So, this is an L, a R and a C and my equations would just be L d 2 q by d t square plus uh, r times q dot plus q over c equal to 0. Right? And then the behavior again is the same. This is again the, I am just ignoring the nonlinear element here for the while, but uh, the linear version of this would look something like this and this is the analogous behavior of the simple pendulum in the mechanical uh, system case. Okay. So, we will do some more examples related to this. Okay. So, let us take a system which looks like this. So, all this is my reference points or the reference node as I would call it. I have a mass which I call m 1 and which goes around this surface between the mass and the reference point is a spring with constant k 1. There is another mass m 2 right? and between these two masses is a damper with its value b 1 2, a spring connecting these two masses with spring constants k 1 2. The friction of this surface is B1, the friction over this is B2, right? And there is an external force which is being applied here called F, which results in a displacement here. I will denote this as X2, and this displacement I will denote as X1, okay? And then my problem here or what I want to write is the dynamical equations governing the system or the model of the system. Okay. So, if I go through the steps of the modeling, the first thing to do is to identify the 
number of displacements right in this case it is x1 and x2 so the number of displacements is 2 then what are the nodes right if i follow the steps i would choose x1 and x2 as my nodes together with a reference node okay so okay so if i just mark my nodes here i call this x1 and let me call this x2 and maybe a, a reference node here okay now if i look at each of my element right the first element m1 is between x1 and the reference node right so i will just draw it this way so x1 and the reference node in between is m1 okay now look at even k1 k1 is also between x1 and the reference node so i could draw it okay and similarly also with b1 so the b1 the damping element would show up here on this b1 okay now between the nodes x1 and x2 is a dash spot or a damping element or and also a spring so i would write this as a spring so between x1 and x2 the damping element and the spring with coefficients b12 and k12 okay now i go to node number 2 there is a mass between node number 2 and the reference similarly a damping element here so that would look something like this so between this there is a mass m2 there is the frictional element denoted b2 and there is a force which is being applied which looks like this okay now once we have the system written in 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 form of its nodal components then it's easy for me to write down the dynamics or i just write down the conservation loss at node 1 right node 1 where i have the mass a spring a damper or nor actually node x1 right so okay how will the equations look like all the forces corresponding to each of these elements this would be m1 x1 double dot plus this is modeled as k times x the damper goes like b1 x1 dot that takes care of these three elements through node 2 there are also these other two elements and these equations would be b12 x1 dot minus x2 dot plus k12 x1 minus x2 is 0 right so the sum of all the forces here is is 0 okay now i look at the second node node 2 or denoted by x2 right we have an input force force of this guy over here force of the mass and these two elements right okay so this would just look like f is m2 x2 double dot plus b2 x2 dot corresponding to this element and i have this these two guys here b12 now with x2 dot minus x1 dot plus k12 
x2 minus x1 right the sum of all the forces here is equal to the external force which is being applied through f right so these are the entire equations which govern the the dynamics of the system okay so we also learned how to write this in the force voltage analogy and also the force to current analogy okay so let's just recollect how these analogies look like okay so here we learned the analogy between electrical and mechanical systems via the force voltage analogy and also the force current analogy so let's draw this this equivalent mechanical system in terms of its force say starting with a uh, voltage analogy okay so the force to voltage analogy tells me that force is related to the voltage mass with an inductive element friction with a resistor spring with a capacitor with 1 over c being the, the value okay so if i just use those directly uh, my equations uh, okay let's uh, write down the equations first that might help us drawing the picture a little better so so m becomes l1 the basic elements here are the displacement the displacement will be mapped to the charge so i have l1 q1 double dot plus r1 q1 dot plus q1 over c plus r1 2 q1 minus q2 plus 1 over c12 q1 minus q2 right so the mass is replaced by this inductor b1 by r1 okay k1 by 1 over c you can look at the analogy table why this is 1 over c then r12 replaced is uh, represents b12 and 1 over c12 represents k12 all this equating to zero okay the second equation would look like the force would be analogous to a voltage l2 q2 double dot r2 q2 dot plus r12 q2 dot minus q1 dot okay i'm sorry there'll be a dot here as well right because of the x x1 dot minus x2 dot will transform to q1 dot minus q2 dot right plus 1 over c 1 2 q2 minus q1 okay now if i were to draw the equivalent circuit well uh, i have the voltage source v which is an analogy of the force then i will have r2 l2 representing the mass m2 then these two elements b12 and k12 would look something like this i have a r12 c12 and then the mass m1 with l1 the element b1 with r1 and the spring k1 is analogous to c1 okay so if i write down treat of this as a circuit right when then write down the equations with possibly maybe this directions of current i just get these two equations right and this is essentially the force to voltage analogy right similarly we could also write down the force to current analogy 
Okay, in the force to current analogy, my force is analogous to current, mass instead of an inductor now is analogous to a capacitor, the friction element is now a conductor, spring is now equivalent to an inductor and the displacement is now analogous to a flux element. Right? Okay. So, let us see how the first equation goes, m1 x1 double dot plus k1 x1 b1 x1 dot b12 x1 dot minus x2 dot plus k12 x1 minus x2 going to 0. Okay. So, m1 from the table would represent the capacitor C1, x is equivalent to the flux phi, I will call it phi 1 double dot plus the spring element is equivalent now to an inductor and have 1 over L phi 1. Now, with the resistor, I will have 1 over R1 phi 1 dot plus 1 over R12 phi 1 2 sorry phi 1 dot minus phi 2 dot plus 1 over L12 of phi 1 minus phi 2 all this is equal to 0. Okay. Now, look at the dimensions of all this, all this have dimensions of current. So, I am just writing down uh, a current conservation law at a, at a particular node. Earlier, I, wrote, I, I had written down the voltage conservation law. Similarly, the second equation my source F is equivalent to a current. And again going back the, to the analogy table, I can write down the equations in the following way. So, how would this uh, look like in the circuit diagram? The mass, I start with the mass, will be replaced by C1, then I have the spring with L1. B1 replaced with R1, then I have these two elements here, okay. so, so this is R12 L12, then I have the other three elements following, right. The current source, I have M2 replaced with C2 and B2 replaced with R2 and this is my equivalent circuit in the F i analogy, right. So, we started with a system, we had it in a form where, where we could write equations with node 1 and node 2 just the summation of all the forces is 0. Then we came to the force voltage analogy using the table and the force current analogy right? and we even could even come up with the equivalent circuits. Okay? So, uh, the second example is a motor driving a load. through a gear train. Okay, so, how does this look like? Okay, let me denote this block as my motor okay. with this motor is connected 
to a gear train And this gear train is then in turn connected to a load. Okay. Okay. So the motor produces a torque Tm. Right. I'll also denote the moment of inertia here as J1. Right. The displacement as theta1 again in this direction. Right and a friction coefficient d1 over here okay similarly here if this is moving this way theta2 will go in this direction right imagine this as a gear rotating this way then this will force it to rotate the other way okay and then there'll be a certain load torque okay now this gear has a radius of r1 with the number of teeth if i may call as n1 here it is r2 and n2 right so i can call this as the primary and secondary right analogous to what i call in in the transformer okay now i want to write down the dynamical equations for this or the model for this okay so start with the motor shaft thing first okay what are the elements here well the motor generates or gives me this torque tm now i have j1 theta1 double dot right plus d1 theta1 dot okay now this would be the dynamics if there is no load or there is no no gear train also right so the input power would be consumed by the inertia here the j1 and the frictional element now what this load does is well it requires some torque and how is this torque ref reflected here it is reflected via this gear train to something here so there will be additional torque which is experienced here or additional load because of or additional torque because of the load let me denote this as tl so tm now compensates for j d or j1 d1 and also this tl right okay i'll not call this tl i'll say i'll call this t1 okay this tl is reflected here through the gear train as t1 okay so i'll have a t1 here okay now at the load side at the load side okay so i have a j2 here and a d2 similarly i have a j1 and d1 here okay so here this t1 is experienced here as some t2 right i'll tell you the relation between t1 and t2 shortly so here i have the term corresponding to j2 as j2 theta2 double dot then i have the friction element here theta2 dot plus i have the load torque tl so where does all this come from so i have to compensate for the load compensate for j2 compensate for d2 and this comes via t1 through the gear train and let me call this as t2 okay or let's see the entire process here right so i have tm the motor torque it first compensates for j1 and d1 and gives me a torque t1 here this t1 is transferred via the gear train to the secondary side called t2 and this t2 has to compensate for the load compensate for d2 and compensate for j2 right and each of these models which we had seen earlier right why is this j2 theta2 double dot why is this d2 theta dot and so on 
Okay. Now, what is the relation between T1, T2, R1, N1 and R2, N2? So, we will we will use the re relation that the linear distance travelled by both the gears is the same, which means theta 1 times r 1 is theta 2 times r 2. Okay. Since the linear distance travelled by both the gears is the same, I have that theta 2 by theta 1 is r 1 over r 2 is n 1 over n 2. Okay. Further, I assume that in the transfer of power between the primary side of the gear to the secondary side, there is no power loss, which means T 1 theta 1 is T 2 theta 2. Now, this means that T 1 over T 2 is theta 2 over theta 1 is n 1 over n 2. Okay. Now, the relationship here can also be written in the following way that theta 2 double dot theta 1 double dot the angular acceleration the angular velocity is n 1 over n 2. Okay. Now, T 1 can be written as n 1 over n 2 times T 2. Okay. Now, what is T 2? T 2 is J 2 theta 2 double dot d 2 theta 2 dot plus T L. So, the relationship between T 1 and T 2 is given by substituting for T 2 over here that is J 2 theta 2 double dot plus d 2 theta 2 dot plus T L. Okay. Now, substituting for this T 1 in this equation gives me the following that T m is J 1 theta 1 double dot this one plus d 1 theta 1 dot plus T 1. So, I am substituting for T 1 here that is n 1 over n 2 j 2 theta 2 double dot plus d 2 theta 2 dot plus T L. Okay. Now, from this expression, I can rewrite this expression again in everything in terms of theta 1, right. I will have to write everything theta 1 or theta 1 double dot and theta 1 dot. So, this will look like the following j 1 theta 1 double dot, okay, let us do, let us take this term j 2 theta 2 double dot is in terms of theta 1 would be j 2 again from this expression. What is theta 2 double dot? Theta 2 double dot is n 1 over n 2 theta 1 double dot. right? So, j 2 
theta 2 double dot would be j 2 theta 1 double dot with n 1 over n 2. Okay. Now, here I have n 1 over n 2 j 2 theta 2 double dot therefore, n 1 over n 2 j 2 theta 2 double dot would simply become this guy. Okay. Now, there is this term corresponding to theta 1 double dot and also j 2 theta 2 double dot can be written in terms of theta 1 double dot. So, substituting for this guy over here I get the following. So, I have j 1 plus j 2 n 1 by n 2 whole square times theta 1 double dot. Okay. Similarly, I could do for the second term, right? I can write d 2 theta 2 dot in terms of theta 1, right? We are just using the relation that theta 2 dot is theta 1 dot n 1 over n 2, which means n 1 over n 2, here n 1 over n 2 d 2 theta 2 dot. is d 2 what is theta 2 dot theta 2 dot is n 1 over into theta 1 dot. So, I have theta 1 dot n 1 over n 2 square. Okay. So, the second term would be d 1 plus n 1 by n 2 square d 2 theta 1 dot plus now the remaining term is n 1 over n 2 times T L. All this is equal to T M. Okay. Now, I can call this j equivalent I can call this entire guy as d equivalent and write down my overall equations this that j or okay, is called j 1 equivalent or d 1 equivalent that j 1 equivalent theta 1 double dot plus d 1 equivalent theta 1 dot plus n 1 over n 2 t l is t m right. So, this is the dynamics referred to the motor shaft and if you remember something from transformers, this would also resemble the equivalent circuit dynamics referred to the primary side. Okay? Now, I could also do it refer to the load shaft. Where I just write down the equations. So, you will have j 2 equivalent theta 2 double dot, where I just want to write down all equations now in terms of or this one, this equation in terms of not theta 1 double dot, but now in terms of theta 2 double dot plus d 2 equivalent theta 2 double dot plus the T L would remain as it is and T M would get transformed via the gear ratio to N 2 over N 1 of T M. It is a, a, exactly the same procedure which we did here in terms of writing in theta 1 double dot, we just write in theta 2 double dot using these relations and the first two equations which govern the dynamics. Okay. So, these are two ways of writing down the entire equations of, of motion of this one referred 
to what we in the transformer terminology call as a primary side or the motor shaft in this case or refer to the secondary side or as the load shaft in this case. Sorry. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. This will be theta two dot. Thanks, thanks for correcting that. Okay, so this will be J two theta two double dot. D two will come always with a theta two dot plus T L is N two by N one T M. Okay, so thank you for your attention.